Hi guys, it's Kelly Lanavola here and I am back with another video for Neat and Tangled. Today I'm going to be using the Beach Day Stamp Set and Die and then also the Hello Summer Stamp Set and Die. We're going to be making three different cards here and we're going to be talking about um, complementary summer colors. So I just pulled out some Distress Oxides here and some summer colors. Um, they're a little bit brighter, um, like maybe on the hair side of like neon and then these are just a couple of the color combinations that I came up with just with these um, six colors and I wanted to do some backgrounds with them so because I wanted three colors that I picked the complementary colors first those are the first pair that I showed you so for this instance it would be the um, teal so a blue green and the orange which is right persimmon which is a red orange and they're opposites on the color wheel that's what complementary colors means and they're just a natural contrast that will always work well together so when you're picking colors if you go with complementary colors, you know they're always going to look nice. And then the way that I did this here was I looked to see what other colors I could put between them um, so that I could make a gradient or a blend. And the yellow worked pretty nicely, honestly, for most of these. Um, the only one I think I didn't use the yellow for was the purple and yellow uh, complementary uh, duo. And then I put pink in between them because pink blends nicely with yellow and pink blends nicely with um, purple. So that just some ideas heading into summer for maybe some uh, color combinations you want to try to work with. I know that I have a tendency to lean towards like pink and green. Um, that's just something that's like kind of my go-to and so doing things like this can kind of get me um, thinking about other color combinations that I really like. So I have sped up the ink blending a little bit. I will tell you with this, um, I chose oxides for a reason, um, but they, they are easier to blend, but especially with this one where it's just kind of in the center of the card, you need to make sure you're wiping off the excess um, ink on whatever your like craft mat or this one's a watercolor media mat, whatever surface you're working on, make sure you're buffing off some of that color. Otherwise, um, you're going to get like the big circles, which here in this case with the pink, I kind of did, but I was able to blend them out. So anywho, before we get too far into this video, I want to let you know that there is a massive, I mean, whoo, just huge retirement sale going on over at Neat and Tangled right now. There are so many amazing stamp sets that are on sale. Um, their stamp sets as low as $3, dies for as low as $3. Guys, it's crazy over there. Um, so I wanted to let you know that here I'm just flicking on some clean clear water to kind of break up the color in the background and then here's um, reason number two why I chose oxides I'm going to pick up some of this color and kind of spatter it on because it's summer and it's splashy and a little bit messy and I just thought those would be a fun way to do the backgrounds and um, because uh, their oxides which is a dye and a pigment combination some of the lighter colors will sit on top of the darker colors so if I get a couple splashes of yellow on my purple it's not going to make brown and you'll still be able to see the yellow which is amazing um, I'm also going to put perfect pearls on there because it's my go-to I love the shimmer you know I love the shimmer anything to add some shimmer so I'm going to put that on these backgrounds as well Anywho, back to the sale thing that I'm telling you about. Um, all of these stamp sets and dies that I'm using here are part of that sale. And so normally it would be over $60 to purchase all of the things and you can get it for less than 40. I think when I did the math, it was like 37 bucks or something for everything that I'm using here, which is crazy wild. And um, so there's just a lot of really good stuff over there. I would encourage you to head over to the store. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, everything will be linked below. And if I didn't, I think I did tell you this is Beach Day. And I really love this set. I'm kind of sad it's being retired because I've used it multiple times. Um, but it's, it's super cute and we're right at the beginning of summer, even though you wouldn't really know it. So let's talk about the weather here while we're, we're starting of the, the coloring. I made all of my little guys gray because you got an elephant, a hippopotamus, and a rhino. If you know me, if you watch my videos before, you already know that the word I can't say is hippopotamus. Here we are on the internet saying it again. I can't say it if I concentrate really hard and say hippopotamus, hippopotamus, hippopotamus. Hey, I said it kind of right there. Um, but then that also sounds weird. So anyway, they're all gray um, animals anyway. So I just went ahead and colored them all in one fail swoop before I started coloring each character and it's a coordinating accessory uh, to go with my cards. 
So the weather. Let's talk about the weather. It is, today is June 19th, okay? June 19th. And I think we have had mm, maybe three days that have been in the, I don't know, high 70s. It has rained every single day for the past week, except yesterday was the first day there was actually sun in the sky. And I actually put out a photo on Instagram, like, don't be frightened by the ball of fire in the sky. It's actually the sun. You can remember that far back to when the sun was here before. It is just, it's been sloppy, wet, um, humid. And for your curly haired girls, that's me. Um, it's just been a nightmare. <laughs> we're just all, there's a meme out there that says like, make sure you check on your curly haired friends. Cause we're all out here looking like alpacas <sighs> preach. That is the truth. Um, it's just like, it's not even worth doing your hair because it's just, <laughs> it's just going to be a hot mess anyway. Um, so today it is supposed to rain later tonight, but right now it is beautiful out and I am super grateful to see the sun. I need my vitamin D. Um, but yeah, needless to say, I still have my winter coloring going on. Not really, not really picking up any sun rays. Um, so yeah, so that's been going on. And then the, if you've followed before my maintenance saga, I'm also in the middle of that because my lease is getting ready to be up. Okay. So, you know, when you sign a lease for anything, right, your car, your house, your whatever it is that you're leasing, you agree to do X things. Okay. X being whatever it is the things are in the agreement. And then the company that you're signing with also agrees to do X things. It's kind of how, you know, contracts work. Well, you all know that I have had issues with my maintenance. For those of you who have asked, uh, my carpet still is not fixed. It still has seams in it. Um, I had a window that was leaking back in February um, because we had like an ice storm and then it thawed and then stormed and thawed. And I discovered that the window was leaking one night at like two o'clock in the morning. I couldn't figure out what like this noise was. And it was water dripping down my wall onto um, a shipping box. Um, and so they haven't been back to fix that at all. And they send me this email that says, FYI, at the beginning of your, you know, next year's lease, there's an automatic 5% rent increase. Like, are you out of your mind? Have you lost your mind? What would I pay you extra for? I'm sad I've paid you this long for you not holding up your end of the bargain. So needless to say, I have a telephone call in to voice my um, disagreement with that. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But they're supposed to come out here to fix my window, um, when, two weeks from now? So I'll be interested to see if anybody even shows up and if they show up, what they're, if they're going to even be able to fix it or fix it correctly. Because this particular window, now... Anyway, it's in my craft room, so they're going to need to be in and out because I am I got things to do. I'm, I'm a busy bee. Um, but anyway, I will, I don't understand. So I get like when this house was a foreclosure and because I looked into the history of it before I rented it. And so it was a foreclosure. It did stand vacant for about a year while they were doing all of the upgrades, which is honestly when I think all of the insects moved in. Don't worry, we're going to come back to the insects. Um... And so they, you know, when you're flipping a house, I get it. You're not spending the most on materials. You're not spent, you know what I mean? You're, you're just trying to fix it up so that it looks decent and then moving on with life. I understand that. However, they replaced every single window in this house, except for that window in my craft room that is leaking. Why? Why? You only had one more window to go. That was it. You had one window to go. I don't understand why you would not fix that. But nonetheless, here we are. Um, insects. So I have ants. I mean, I have spiders too. The glue traps are working. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw that. So a lot of you made the suggestion that I get some glue traps. Um, and so I did that. And then I told Eric that it was his job to be the glue trap checker because I honestly didn't even want to see their carcasses. But today, because I have ants, um, about a month ago, I think it was, um, there was, I noticed ants, like there was one or two or whatever on my desk. And I was like, what is up with this? So I put out ant traps, seemed to take care of the problem. No issue. And ants are annoying. Like they don't gross, they don't skeeve me out like spiders do. Okay. They're, they're annoying. I don't like them, but 
it's better than like a million spiders in my house. So anywho, um, the, the problem seemed to go away with the ant traps and I was happy. Well, then last weekend, Eric and Peanut were out there like pulling weeds and doing the flower bed to put new mulch down. And it's right along the wall that my craft room is backed up against. So what I think happened was like they disturbed the nest or made a new little aisle way for them to get in or whatever it is. Because the ants are back now and they're worse. They're worse than they were before. So I need to spray. Um, but it's very difficult to find an indoor spray that's also safe for pets. And I do have a, um, I do have a dog, so I need to be aware of that. So I did this DIY deterrent spray in the hope that if I cannot murder them, which I know some of you guys are insect lovers and I know God created them and they all serve a purpose. I don't deny that. What I am denying is them access to my home. Okay. If they want to live, they need to stay on the outside. They want, you know. If they're kamikaze ants or spiders, come on in. I'll be happy to take care of it for you. Um, so, anywho, so I created this DIY spray that I saw on the internet. And it is white vinegar, um, peppermint oil, and water. And then you spray it and it's supposed to deter them. So, I am doing that. Um, I'm not sure if it's working because I've only just been doing it for just today. But I can tell you that my craft room reeks. I mean, it just <laughs> reeks of vinegar. Um... So, yeah, I wish there was a less smelly option, but there does not appear to be one. And if it works, I'll just smell like vinegar all the time. I'm cool with it. I don't mind. Um, but hopefully it does work because it's pretty, it's just like gross. Honestly, I'm, I told my girlfriend Dawn today when we were talking, I'm waiting for one of them to just like crawl across the screen when I'm doing my coloring, get his 15 minutes of YouTube fame. Um, but it hasn't, it hasn't happened yet. But I'm waiting for it. I'm not going to be surprised when it happens. And then you'll probably get to watch me kill it because I'm, I just cannot let it continue to just crawl around my desk. It, it's gross. Um, yeah, so that's that. I'm trying to think if there's been anything else that's been going on here. Um, oh, the spiders, the glue traps. Guys, I'm telling you, I have, I have adult ADD. I cannot, I'm like squirrel, shiny thing, loud noises. What's happening? Um... So because I had to move everything back away from the wall, um, I did have, like, I was down on the floor spraying this DIY ant deterrent. And the angle that I had allowed me a little peep, a little peek see into the glue trap that was on the floor that's Eric's job to take care of. And let me tell you, dude's fallen down on the job. He's wonderful. I adore him. But he is clearly not checking the spider traps because there are somewhere between two to three very large dead spiders in this glue trap and I'm not touching it like this I will I will leave this for the next person who runs this house I will leave that trap right there I am not picking up this glue trap that has dead spider carci carca carcassi carca I don't think it's a lot I think you only add an I to the end of the word if it's root is Latin and since I'm never going to be a contestant on Jeopardy, I don't know if the word carcass is Latin. So I'm going to say carcasses, even though carcassi is kind of more fun to say. I'm not going to lie. You have words that you feel like are fun to say? I do. See, there's words I can't say. We've taught, we've discussed the hippopotamus. But then there's also words that are fun to say, like papoose. That's a fun word. It's just fun. So tell me, if you have a fun word that you like to say, or you have a word, oh, look, there's an ant right there on my computer. Like, he's just crawling around, living life, living large, finding something to take back to his buddies. I'm going to kill you. It's going to happen. Um, so, yeah. So tell me if you have fun words that you can or cannot say or words that you enjoy saying. Um, see, don't we talk about such interesting things here besides my Copic coloring? Which, by the way, um, I did go full out Copic coloring here. That's probably not necessary because there's so much color that's added to um, the entire card with the Distress Oxide background. You probably don't need to go full blown coloring. You could probably do just one wash of color or one or two colors and probably still be fine. But um, it's also uh, Kathy Rakusen's 30 Day Challenge. And see, now he's dead. I killed him. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I mean, I'm sorry that you ended up here, but I'm, I'm not sorry that I killed you. Um, 
But anyway, Kathy Raikusen's 30-day coloring challenge has started just a couple of days ago. And um, the whole premise behind that is that you color for yourself, that you find just a couple of minutes a day to kind of spend coloring and decompressing and spending just a few moments of your time on yourself. And um, even though I know not everybody likes to color with four colors, even though I know everybody doesn't want to do the kind of detailed Copa coloring that I do, this is the type of coloring that I enjoy uh, and I enjoy it very much. And so in the, um, I guess the theme of participating in that type of challenge and, and celebrating that and taking a little bit of time for myself, I decided that I was going to color them the way that I enjoy coloring them. However, if this type of coloring with all of these different colors and the shading, no, honestly, I didn't really pay attention to a light source because um, sometimes that's even stressful for me. I'm not going to lie. Um, but because this is just what I enjoy, if it's not what you enjoy, if this is something that is a source of stress or frustration for you, I can I would encourage you to keep trying, keep trying different color combinations, keep trying, you know, if you're comfortable with two colors, push yourself to do three every once in a while. If you're comfortable with three, push yourself to do four, embrace those darker colors. We're going to talk about that with these swim trunks here in a minute. Um, but if it's, you're just sitting down and all you have is five minutes to yourself to just enjoy a little bit of time coloring, that's not the time to practice. Just give yourself the, the little bit of grace to just enjoy the time that you have in your craft room and then move on. So this, um, these swim trunks are, is a little bit of a, a trust exercise because as you can see, my darkest color is an E09. And that probably like in your head, you're like, you're starting with a Y08 and you're ending with an E09. Like, woman, are you out of your skull? How does that even make sense? It does. It blends. <laughs> it blends and it gives it a nice rich orange color. Um, without being too much of a red orange. Uh, that's why I chose that particular um, shade to use as my shadow color. But don't be afraid of your darker colors, especially in those practice sessions. If you don't have any intent of putting it on a card, if you just stamp out a bunch of images and you're like, today's going to be the day that I give myself 15, 20 minutes to practice, practice putting in some darker colors. You don't have to use a ton. We've talked about this before. You do not have to use a lot. You can just use the little teeniest, tiniest bit. And I promise you, you will see a difference in your coloring. Just give it a try. Um, if you're heavy handed, try to use just the very, the very teeniest, tiny, like the little tip of the marker, just the little teeniest, tiny tip of the marker. Um, cause otherwise you may find that you get frustrated with your coloring or using darker colors because it overtakes all of your coloring. And, um, that's obviously not the intention. The darkest part you just want where the shadows are, but that does come with practice and learning how to control your marker and how much pressure you need to be putting down. That is something that I can only tell you about. I cannot do it for you. I can't teach it to you. Believe me, if I could, I would, because it took me a long time to learn it. It took me a lot of practice to learn it. That's why I color the way that I do, lightest to darkest and then darkest to lightest, because I know I'm super heavy handed with my first color when I'm mapping out my shadows. I'm very, very heavy handed and I cannot start with my darkest color. I just can't because then the whole thing will be dark. Um, so, you know, with that practice, also you're going to learn, you know, with just learning better control of your marker, you're also going to learn um, what you need to work on, what what your uh, what you need to compensate for like I need to compensate for that uh being heavy-handed in the beginning I know that I am I cannot stop myself guys I try I cannot stop myself but because I know that I can start the coloring process a little bit differently and then avoid that so um yeah just lots going on we did our um did our youth group kind of like end, end of the summer celebration, which was super fun. Uh, we did a cookout. One of the um, sergeants that I work with, her husband came and manned the grill for us and he was awesome. And we got to give the kids awards. Um, so we do like challenge coins, ones for like leadership, ones for uh, creativity, ones for team spirit. So we do that. And then we also created a new kind of position within um, youth group uh, called um, Junior Leaders. And so we have two girls who are awesome and they always are like the first ones there. They stay late to um, 
clean up. They always help us set up. They're super responsible. Um, and they, you know, have been there since almost since the very beginning. Um, and so we promoted them to junior leaders to give them a little bit more responsibility. So that was awesome. Awesome. Um, so did that. And then we have Peanuts first baseball game coming up. So that'll be this weekend, which I'm super excited for because I think that he'll have a lot of fun at the game. And we picked a night that's like a family night, which is always a good idea because they have fireworks. Um, so you saw I just added some highlights and some details with that white gel pen, um, you know, especially to the like the little rubber duck float. That's going to be shiny. Um, I also cleaned up uh, the hippo's teeth and their toenails, their feet. Um, with the white gel pen, so I didn't have to really worry about any of my colors bleeding. Here's a little trick for building up um, your sentiments when they're a more intricate die cut. So I sometimes have trouble when I want to build up a couple of layers, making sure that the die cut looks the way that it was intended, because sometimes with all of those cuts with um, like handwritten ones, like the summer one, which I love, I love the font on it. Pretty sure this is Danielle's handwriting and she's amazing. Um, so, but sometimes I have trouble keeping them the same shape. This is like a little cheat trick. Um, I just put repositional adhesive. For me, that's Tombow Mono Multi-Glue. Um, and I just scribble a little bit on a scrap piece of paper. And then I use one of the outlines for the dies that I've already, like the, the negative of it. And I just stick that down and then I can glue all of my, um, layers right on top of each other and they stay where they're supposed to stay because the base layer is held together. You can see exactly where they go. And then because it's repositionable, once you're done gluing all the layers together, you just take it off. The middle piece will pop right out and then everything's all lined up matchy matchy the way that it was intended. So I'm just going to finish doing the rest of those. I love these glitter papers for real y'all. The, these are Simon Says Stamp glitter papers and I have never found a better glitter paper for die cutting. They're amazing. Um, this, I wanted to add a little bit more interest into the background. And so part of the stamp set for the Hello Summer is this, um, it's basically like a block and it has all these cute little like beach sayings. And this is the last reason why I chose the oxides. And it's because of that pigment property. They'll sit on top of that background. And then I won't have to worry about the words not being able to be seen. With that said, I stamped over the... Uh, right persimmon and the peacock feathers in the um, squeezed lemonade and you can see it in real life it's not super apparent but it is legible but in the video and in the photos it's almost impossible to see it is there and I picked a different color for each one um, I, I think the I stamped and twisted citra on the squeezed lemonade and then picked raspberry here I wanted these fun little labels to make the cards whole. So um, I'm just going to do some heat embossing for that. I treated it with my embossing buddy and then I'm gonna stamp it in Versamark ink. So then I can heat emboss it in white because I already you know stamped them in black. Um, and I just like how a bold black sentiment with um, bright colors. I just do, that's my jam. Um, but if you don't, you know, you could certainly do this with a different color or instead of making the word summer colored, you could do colored cardstock for your heat embossing and do the word summer in black or something like that. But I also love glitter, which is why I picked the glitter paper. So now for as far as like putting them together, the sentiment um, portion that we heat embossed, the little label is going to be popped up. The main character is going to be popped up on foam tape and then the um whatever accessories they ended up with the flag the sun the sandcastle sorry about that telephone ringing um so but anyway the all those things are going to be adhered flat so that there is a little bit of distinct dimension between the two and then for um the word summer i am going to it is popped up, you know, a little bit. So it has that dimension that we put on there. Um, and then I'm just going to glue that flat and let that dimension be what it is. So these are all three cards. Um, I think that they're super cute and fun for summer. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Make sure you hit up that retirement sale because it's going to go fast. And I will catch you on the next video. Bye.